Hi, my name is Andromeda, my pronouns are she, they, and today we'll be talking about the queer networks and friendship clubs, which formed in Germany during the early 1900s, that were important in establishing a sense of community across the country. Gay scenes were composed not simply of locations for people to meet, but also networks of people who maintained friendships and love affairs. In the early 20th century, these networks of men and women generally took the form of informal circles. They might meet in gay bars, but just as often they would see each other at neighborhood restaurants or at the home of a friend on prearranged days. Normally comprising 10 to 20 people, but occasionally as many as 60, they would gather for dinner or afternoon coffee or tea. They might hold socials or even dances in their homes, and even arrange for summertime picnics and other kinds of group outings. Such circles were fairly common in the gay scenes of Berlin and other German cities, though occasionally they would become formalized into clubs or associations. Around the turn of the century, there was a literary club called the Platten Society, made up of homosexual men, and the Long Green Club, which was centered on a man in the wine business, nicknamed The Queen, who organized musical performances and occasionally a little theater for his friends. Others were on the face of it, clubs devoted to a particular pastime or interest. For instance, hiking clubs or patrons of the music or of the arts were quite popular. Only insiders knew that the club members also happened to be entirely homosexual. Hirschfeld noted that bowling clubs were an especially popular form of entertainment among Berlin's working-class lesbians. The number of homosexual social clubs exploded after the conclusion of World War I. They commonly took on names like the Club of Friends or the League of Friends. Friendship clubs were predominantly social societies that organized conversational meetings, dinners, parties, and celebrations for queer individuals, and soon included thousands of participants nationally. They generally did not neglect educational and political work, but at the core of it, were centered on a feeling of community. By the mid-1920s, every major German city had at least one gay social club. Hamburg, for instance, had two groups. The League of Friends for Greater Hamburg, that was primarily focused on organizing social opportunities, and the Hamburg Society for Sexual Research, which held talks on scientific matters and attempted to promote the abolition of Paragraph 175. The vast proliferation of these local groups seemed to call for some sort of national umbrella organization. So on August 30th, 1920, the friendship clubs in Berlin, Hamburg, Frankfurt, and Stuttgart came together to form the German Friendship Alliance, or DHV, which had its headquarters in Berlin. The DHV organized two national meetings to bring together members of the numerous friendship clubs. The first was in Kassel in March 1921, and the second was in Hamburg in April 1922. Through these meetings, they were able to add many new friendship clubs to their roster, extending their reach. As the DHV grew larger, conflict erupted over the course the group would take. An important figure 
Frederick Ratzewit, became a major individual in the gay publishing scene, and soon emerged and convinced Berlin's local friendship club in 1923 to rename itself to the Federation for Human Rights. As the city's group was largely the same as the leadership of the National DHV, Retsovit took control of the Umbrella Organization and renamed it to he established a more disciplined and centralized structure for the national organization. In the next years, the BFM took on a more active role in spreading its reach beyond Berlin by helping form and promote chapters in new locations. The organization grew dramatically, from having little more than 2,000 members in 1922 to as many as 48,000 by the end of the decade. There were few women in the friendship clubs, but there was nevertheless a separate women's division of the BFM that formed in 1927. The division was led by Lot Ham, probably the most important lesbian leader during the 1920s. Lotham saw herself not simply as a lesbian, but also as a transvestite, and in 1929 she helped establish a transvestite group for men and women called Dion. These groups which formed across Germany were influential in building a sense of community among Berlin's queer groups. They provided spaces of comfort, acceptance, love, and belonging, which aided in queer individuals' health and well-being. Especially influential in a time where acceptance was not widespread. Next time, we'll discuss the queer publishing industry in Weimar Germany, which expanded rapidly around the same time as the Friendship Clubs did. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned some valuable queer history, and I'll see you all in the next video.